YOLO composing gloves here, and today we're going to witness the battle of champions. We're going to see this Lice EQ versus the Carve EQ. These are the equalizers that Kilo Hearts makes. They could be loaded as snap-ins. Uh, I believe you have to purchase them separately in order to get them, or if you do the whole the rental bundle. There's an affiliate code down below if you're interested in that. But what we have here are there are two EQs, the Slice EQ and the Carve EQ. I think most people use the Slice EQ, um, but the Carve EQ's got some edges to it that I really like. It's got, you know, it carves up the slices, the slices, the carves. Okay, let's just start off with a demo patch. I have a patch here. And I want to do some sound design with this patch. So we're going to do that. Now, you can see here, one of the things the Slice EQ can do that the Carve EQ cannot do is it has filters that you can automate. And if you don't know, it's really kind of a hidden menu. But if you click it, it shows up right here. I believe if you double click a node, it also pops up. I can't remember. But it pops up and we're able to mess with our various filters. So I have just these massive sweeping filters, massive shell filter, and this really crazy notch just running around. And it's creating just a resonant spike that I really like. I hit it with the distortion and that's great. So I'm using sort of two things. I'm using it to, as sort of a volume shaper and I'm also using it as a thing to drive a distortion. So it's kind of two birds with one stone. Yeah, earlier I was complaining, well not complaining, but just pointing out, just pointing out that sometimes it's a bit of a bummer that the filter module has no band pass band option. So like here I click it, I don't have like an option to change this band, but I could do this. And this has advantages because I can do like processing in the middle, which in the patch I show this in, there's processing in the middle. So there's advantages to having it separately. But I could have solved this with just one instance of a slice EQ and, and just bam, bam. If you click far enough to the edge, it'll actually, it's on the smart tool. So it's going to do it for me. And I'm given pretty extensive options. If I, yep, it's not, you have to right click. That's what brings it up. So we can actually control now our band individually. We can automate them super easy. We can control the individual cues on the two bands. So this has a lot of options here, and you can do that in the Slice EQ. Now you can't do this in the Carve EQ. The Carve EQ is a bit of a funny, a funny guy. There's no filter types. There's just carving. We'll get to that one after we finish the Slice EQ. So we're able to drop down nodes really easy. We can change the filter types. Actually, you can't change the filter types. That's a thing. Uh, we were actually I was asking about it on Discord. I don't know if it'll be added or not. I haven't heard back yet, but currently. I know of no way to change the filter type. You would have to just, you know, select the filter up here and then pick it and put it down, which isn't that bad. It's just, it's a thing you'll probably wind up looking for. I'm just telling you right now, just do that and move on. <laughs> now you're able to change the slopes to some pretty extreme slopes up to 96 dB per octave. So that is pretty epic. You are also able to do the mid side. Um, let me show you that because that is so dang cool. So you have per band mid side. So here on the shelving filter, it's only affecting the mid signal. If I change it to only affect the side signal, I get a super different sound. And so that is powerful. That's so powerful, especially if you put something like a reverb right before something like this, you add a lot more side information and that can just have tremendous impacts on a sound. So I like to grab the slice EQ for the custom filtering and the Carve EQ does this as well. So you've got a mid side. You can also change it to left, right. And you can do like, you know, EQing in each individual channel if that's something that you really want to do. You've got your zoom, your pan, a reference tool. Now reference, what it is, is you can either record a profile and save it or you can go for one of theirs. Now, I was under the impression the first time I used this that when I record it, it would automatically use that as the profile. This is not the case. So just so you know, you need to save it and then you can load up a profile. So I'm just going to use one of the ones in here and you can actually see what another person's profile looked like or another song's profile so that you can go ahead and try and match it and get a little bit closer. Now the Carve EQ has a leg up in this arena. I'll show you it. I'll show you it when we get to the Carve EQ. But that's that. All the resolution controls are down here. You can control how long the, let's turn this off. You can control how long the frequency sits up there. 
So I have it on, what is this? Fall off is off, so it's just gonna freeze. We have slow. I typically have it on medium. You also have the ability to adjust the resolution. So octave and one third octave can be really informative for looking at things more generally. You can also do the exact view. And really buttery smooth, really great. Typically leave it on a third octave. You have oversampling, and you're also able to scale the GUI, which is something like the actual controls. You could scale the controls separate from the actual interface, which is pretty dang awesome because that's gonna solve problems for all kinds of people. So really forward thinking there. All right, so that's pretty much like all the technical controls and I've shown you sort of one or two reasons why you would grab this and use this. I'm using filters and EQs like this all the time for sound design purposes, just because they're, it's so easy to get a filter shape that's fun to mess with. And so it can be quite addicting once you open up uh, one of these. Now the Carve EQ has pretty much very similar things. Uh, let me turn off the reference. Let's just open up a new Carve EQ. So here's a Carve EQ. And in here, we're able to like click and drag and, and carve away. We scale out, we can, you know, move things around. Could be cool, I guess, if you're on like a touchscreen monitor, but you're not able to automate anything except the gain in the mix, at least currently. I know of no other things in here that are sort of automatable. They have a very similar, you, you get a draw tool in this one. So that's pretty cool. Um, you have your regular edit tool so you can move nodes around. I've not tried, do I have modulation options? Nope. It'd be way wild if you could modulate like nodes on the XY plane. Oh my gosh, that would be insane. Maybe I'll have to put that in as a feature request. They have such a long list already. <laughs> so it probably won't happen. I don't know. We also have a reference tool. Now, the thing that makes this one so cool, let's go back to our uh, our default here. Where is our init preset? Do we not have it? Oh, duh, they just use clear. What am I doing? So over here, we have our secret weapon. So we can feed in our input and record it real quick. And we're gonna hit stop. And so now it's got it. It says, good, got it. We're gonna give it a target. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have it match against things. So I'm gonna go for like jazz, what the heck. And so now I've been given a profile and it's going to match it to this EQ, my sound to get it closer to this profile based on what I gave it. So you may wanna play out parts that are more representative of your actual song. I just sort of dibbled and dabbled, which is great because I'm doing sound design. So a lot of people are gonna tell you to bring the amount down and the detail down some because you wanna do general strokes to your track. You don't wanna do like hyper specific things if you're doing like an EQ match, whoops, an EQ match for in general. So I'm gonna turn my detail all the way up and the amount all the way up because I'm doing sound design and I want crazy stuff to come out of my synthesizer. So this is why I like the car EQ. If I play this, we get a super different sound and we can basically just scroll through all these different sounds and get out different results. Let's go over to uh, Pop, what the heck. And you can select them out. Now, sometimes you get things that are pretty significant. It depends on the content you're feeding it. So here I'm feeding it something that is like, it's across the spectrum, but it's not like super across the spectrum. Uh, and the content's very, very overdriven already. So this isn't gonna do a whole lot to this sound unless I, I wind up with something that's really like polarized. But when you're doing things with like a mix, this can often have just some really cool effects and can often just make things sound nice and warm or bright, whatever you want. You can sort of just scroll through and do sort of like a little tryout session with an EQ. So that's one reason why you could mess around with the Carve EQ. Also a very interesting thing to have before distortion or before something that's sort of level dependent, you get some really interesting results out as well. Now you can modulate the mix controls directly from the interface which is something that's pretty convenient. If you open this up, you can actually see this is all you can modulate currently. Um, the XY thing would be just downright craziness. And here, you looks like you can only do this, but if you open up the filter setting, you get a bunch more things. So that's pretty nice and convenient as well. So that's the EQs. Let's go ahead, let's make a patch with these ideas because that's enough, that's too much talking, yo. 
Let's let's make some music. Let's make some sound. Okay, so I'm just going to go with uh, analog. We're going to do a similar sort of setup. What the heck? We'll run with a saw wave this time. We'll run it into a slice EQ. And in our slice EQ, we're going to put down a filter. We're going to put down three filters. We'll call this the three filter combo. I'm going to scroll my mouse wheel to sort of change the Q. And on these three filters, we're going to automate each one of them. So I'm going to add... Uh, oh, my modulators are down low. Okay, there's two. That was throwing me off. We're going to add an envelope. We're going to add two envelopes. And the first envelope is going to be responsible for moving this around. And we'll change that. And we'll move this. And we'll also move this and that. Just sort of doing random things here. We need a longer attack on this. Sure, what the heck. And this one, we'll move this one down. We'll move that up and we'll move this down. We'll also give this a longer attack. Cool. And we gotta ask ourselves what kind of sound are we making? I'll make something a little more uh, luscious, a little more patty. <laughs> And I'm going to turn on poly mode to avoid problems with the filter turning on and off sort of at random moments that I don't want. So let me play it before that same line. And I'll turn it on. And so far we're having no problems. So it shouldn't be a deal. But if you do something really aggressive, you can start to get just wild clicks and pops everywhere. So this does take more CPU. I'm not that worried though right now. Uh, let's go ahead, let's make some of these things a little more, more, you know? Let's put a distortion on the next one. We're going to go with another Fatuator. Let's try adding a reverb. Cool, so that's what we're going to sit with with a reverb. I said we were going to make something that's uh, it's more like a lead sound again. We're just making lead sounds today. Let's grab a car VQ, give that one a whirl. We'll come in here. We'll give it a little bit of sound. Let's see here. We want to use the input. Record this. Cool. It's got it now. We're going to come in here and show us the money. What do we got? Perfect. <laughs> I kind of dig it. We're getting a huge, huge low end boost, which is, you know, I'm okay with that. Let's go ahead, let's add uh, an envelope to this. So I'm turning it off over time so that when this turns on, this turns off. And the reason is uh, I would like the high end to come in over time. So I think that's kind of a cool thing right there. And we're going to call it there. Let's try tossing in um, a chorus. And we'll put it in the middle of these two guys. Ooh, low. We got a really nice low texture. Okay, uh, I want to try out a haas. I kind of dig it. We're going to stop right there for right now. Uh, this is where I'd start like making a track and really getting a feel for where I kind of want to move with this. Probably also add some more generators, mess with layers, possibly a wavetable. I got a lot of ideas. If you have any questions, let me know. Subscribe and have a blessed day.